This is IAT 806 Lecture 8, where we're going to be talking about a small variety of topics in this segment. Uh, first, we'll talk about array list, then we'll talk about text, and then finally, we'll talk about processing Java mode, where we can make the transition from writing exclusively within the processing system and, you know, the simplified mode of Java that it presents to, it presents to you to the more complex full Java mode where you have to do all the work of specifying a full Java program, but you have access to all of Java's capabilities. So let's get started now in uh, this segment 8.1 where we're talking about an array list. So as we, we you recall from the previous array list lecture, the pros of array list are uh, array lists are great if you don't really know in advance how many things are going to go into the array right? Um, the purpose of an array list is for it to be a variable length, a length that is the size you need when you need it. And so the way it works is that array lists automatically resize when you add to a full array list. And, you know, an array list behind the scenes allocates enough space, whatever that means. And as you add a few items, there's usually enough space for it and it records all that and handles it for you. The drawback, uh, however, or a couple of drawbacks, is that one, array lists are really only built for storing objects. As we said in the previous lecture about array lists, you know, it stores by default capital O objects, which are the parent class of all objects in the Java system. Um, but that means it does not uh, store primitive types you know, by themselves. Uh, there's an, a kind of an object version of primitive types, but you know, really it's not for storing integers or floats in a super efficient way. And so, what you, just as the text says in the slide, you need to make objects from those primitive objects if you want to store them, uh, from those primitive types if you want to store them. The other thing is that's a little problem, it's just simply a cost of doing business really, is that resizing isn't free. So when you're doing resizing, array lists handle the resizing for you, right? You don't have to declare a size when you first create it, you only need to decide how many elements will have when you actually need them and when you add them there's a little it, you know but there's a little cost for that and that is uh, array list behind the scenes needs to be ready for any number of objects and so some algorithms have been developed to anticipate if i keep adding if you know the user of the programmer keeps adding things instead of just adding making enough room for only one more thing i'll make room for a bunch of things and we'll just you know allocate the memory as we need it and not all of it will be used maybe so here's a little snippet of code here. We see array list A, right? Uh, where uh, A um, has um, created a new sort of ordinary array list. We're going to add an object O, and that adds an object in, in, at the next available index. A dot get some integer returns the object that's at, the, at that index, and A dot size returns the number of items in the array list, just as we saw before. So let's take a simple example, and we'll code this up as we go along, in which what we'd like to do is make a little class point. There's, there's really the only one thing this does is just store an X and Y, and there's a constructor for it. That's all this thing does. And um, we'll, what we're going to do with that point is we're going to draw that thing on the screen. We're going to start simple, and we're going to work upwards from there. So here you can see class point. It has two integer uh, values that are the fields of it, x and y. And here's um, a constru the constructor. Uh, it takes integers um, into x, int y. And as you can see, the scope of this x here is it's a parameter to the uh, point constructor. And so x is alive here. But there's a little problem that this creates, and that is this x is the same name as this x. So which one takes priority? The inner x uh, um, takes priority, hides, in some sense, the older one. That doesn't mean that uh, x, the field x has disappeared. It's just simply not available by its un uh, unqualified name. To be able to get at the field, you use the this magic variable. You'll recall that this is this special thing that refers to your own object. This is a classic situation in which uh, the fields and the um, constructor parameters have the same name. And so you need to, to access the field. You say this.x equals x. This variable here indicates the, the, the parameter. The thing here refers to the field. And the same for y. 
So what we're going to do is we're now just going to go to uh, the processing system and shove this information in there. So just one second. So here is the, um, uh, the processing window and I've pasted point in here and it's the same code. Um, so really all I've done here is just constructed, um, uh, you, know, you just created the class point. So let's go back to the slides. The next thing we'd like to do now is to create an array list of points. The, really, I'm just trying to create the most minimal example of, um, of dealing with classes. So uh, instead of creating a pair of array lists that are parallel, one for x, one for y, what we're going to do is the standard uh, object-oriented approach, which is to store an entire um, thing about an x, y pair in point, and then store an array of those points. So here we have array list point, so we're um, telling what type it is that we need to be stored in the array list. Uh, the name of that variable is point list, equals new array list point, uh, a snippet of code here that won't exactly work as you see it, but is just I intended to be drawn here in order to draw your attention to what the, the basics are. Point list dot add new point 4550, point list dot add new point 7923. So those are things that will be at good locations in the standard uh, processing little drawing window. And if we were to then call at the appropriate uh, location in the code, drawing a circle at our second point, we do point to p2 to you know create a variable with that pointless dot get number one and we could draw this ellipse here so let's just do that right now and um, so once again here's the processing window and uh, what we see here are, of course um, you know the the uh, class as before and here's the array list named point list just as we had in the slides and instead of having that code kind of out there in the global area what we're going to do is put it in setup so we have created void setup here, and there's the end of the uh, void setup function. And I've added those two points, as you can see. And now we're going to draw a circle. And uh, what we'll do is just fire that thing up. So there we go. Uh, and uh, you can see the drawing area is just sort of overlapping the, uh, the processing window. But there's the circle that's drawn at the second point which is 79, x is 79, and y is 23. And so there's the center of the ellipse that we ended up drawing there. Um, so anyway, there we go. We got, uh, we used that point, we constructed it, we used one of them to draw this ellipse. So far, so fantastic. So let's go back n now to the, uh, to the slides. And now what I'd like to do um, is, um, uh, for next, sorry, I'm sk skipping around a bit, is um, extend it so that every time we click, what we'd like to be able to do is add a point to our array list. You know, so let's just accumulate points, okay? We're collecting points, collect them all. And so one of the things to do is to um, have, uh, use one of the callback methods to um, act when the mouse button is released that's the standard action point, by the way, for um, mouse activity. It's not when you press things necessarily. It's you activate the menu when you release the button at, at the destination, typically on, say, you know, the OK button or the cancel button. It's on release that it's typically paid attention to. But button pressing, of course, starts the interaction, but button releasing is when you kind of confirm. That gives you the opportunity to move the mouse off the button if you decide, oh, no, I didn't want to do that. So you know, halfway through the gesture, you can change your mind. Anyway, so mouse release is where we want to do it. So let's go back to uh, the processing window and we'll see where that lives. So uh, I've put that code in down below setup here. So there it is, void mouse released. Um, and it does pointless to add new point. Now, if we were to just do this by itself without anything else, nothing would happen. So what we really need to do is to add a, a draw function. And so here's a draw function. I did intentionally misspell that for a reason which will become clear. I've typed in advance what I, else I would like to do. And that thing I, the, Thing I would like to do is be able to kind of collect points and draw them up. So what this draw function does is it clears the background to black, which is different from what you see in the draw area, and begins shape, polygon, 
and then iterates through the point list, drawing a vertex for each of those points. So the way it works is point list dot get i, and that um, returns a point, and then we can say dot x there, just like we said to some things something dot something dot something. Here we can do variable array list dot get i method on that array list uh, dot x, which is because get i returns a point, we can access its field. Normally, we would, if I scroll up here, we would expect to be able to use a function called get point or something like that, or get x or get y, but here we're just accessing it directly. That's not necessarily super mega clean, but it's certainly doable. And in the interest of brevity, we're just doing it this way. So let's scroll all the way back down to the bottom. We do, we get i and then uh, pick off the x ver uh, field, and we do get i and pick off the y field, and we're going to draw that. So let's just see how that works. So there we go. We got a nice black background here, and we have the two points. They're invisibly here. When you draw a polygon that's only two vertices, you get nothing. So here's a third vertex, and now a fourth vertex, and now a fifth vertex, six vertex, seven vertex. 8 vertex, and now let's do something funky. And what you'll see is this kind of uh, funky kind of crossing feature. What's happening is that the polygon drawing, it kind of has to in some way resolve itself. Um, and so what you're seeing is that the polygon is being filled with white and um, has its stroke to be black, and so you see the black outline kind of um, uh, being overdrawn on top of the rest of the polygon. And that's because the way in which the polygon is drawn is kind of iterating through uh, the, the vertices to, to draw the things in their pr perspective order. So we'll just stop that. And now let's go back to the, uh, to the slides. There we go. And what we can see is this is the thing that we had done. Had done. So we're extending that simple example with the array list. Uh, we could do anything with these points as the accumulate. I was just simply drawing that polygon. Um, you know, we uh, uh, began a shape um, we said polygon explicitly in the, our piece of code that we had in processing. And I didn't have this if statement because I kind of knew already that we had two points constructed at, in setup. So I always know that I have two points and then three. Um, if, this is just to prevent something funky happening with the graphics library. So the idea here is that we're just using ArrayList to accumulate points. Now, what I've done, of course, is also demonstrate the very bare, bare bones of a graphics editor. I've taken, you know, here's how I constructed a polygon. I just clicked points and it added it to my polygon. Now, to draw more polygons, you need more storage for more polygons. More than just a single array list for a polygon, but perhaps an array list of array lists of points or something like that. That's certainly legal, uh, certainly possible to do, but that is kind of the bare bones of what you would need for one of the, one of the variations for project two, which is where I'm asking you to create a visualization or an editor. And this is like the very basic parts of an editor. It's, you know, trivial. It's hardly anything really. Okay. So that's it for uh, lecture 8.1 in which we've talked about array lists and kind of elaborated on it and given a hint about one of the things that you could do for project two, which is about, among other things, doing a little drawing editor.